Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our second video of Stitch Happens, which is right behind me. And again, I've got the um, camera turned the other way, so I won't see your comments. I'm trying to bring them up right now on my netbook. So bear with me. Sorry for the slight delay, everybody. Um, I'm lagging a little bit. I hope everybody had a great Mother's Day yesterday. I'm a little bit tired. Um, I went to Epcot to see the International Flower Show, which was beautiful, by the way. Um, but it took a lot out of me. So I'm just a tiny bit tired. And as usual, I'm not having much luck seeing your comments. Hopefully everybody can hear me now. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. The comments might be delayed a little bit, so just bear with me. We're still working on this. So, it's the second video in our Stitch Happens quilt along, and we're gonna be doing part B. Now for part B, you're gonna need three different blues. You're gonna need the lavender and the contrasting um, purple. And we're going to put them together this is what we did last week which is this beginning part of the machine pretty pretty and um you're going to be doing some traditional flying geese in this one and um uh, hopefully Later on in the um, quilt along, you'll be doing a different set of flying geese. So this one is much more traditional. This is what we did last week. Oops, sorry. I had to shut the volume off so we don't have feedback. Um, later on in the quilt along, you're gonna be doing a little bit different flying geese. This one is a much more traditional flying geese where we've got the rectangles and we're gonna put our squares on and flip and sew and that's the actually the first step that we're going to do so you're going to do them with the two purples um, the first one is the lavender color and what we're going to do if hopefully you can see that is we're going to put them right sides together and we're going to draw a line from this corner to this corner and so just a thread's length on this side of the line um, what you need this time around the same as last week is just a marking tool your fabric a ruler and a scissor and an iron and I highly highly recommend best press throughout this process but especially on days like uh, today where we're going to be working with really small pieces
hope everybody is enjoying this quilt along so far. It's meant to be fun and hopefully you learn some new techniques and you've gotten rid of some stash. So we've sewed on the line and then if you finger press it up you can see what it's going to look like. And I need to do one little thing. As usual, not everything when you're doing it live is going to be perfect. I missed the corner just slightly. But enough that it would aggravate me. So, you set your seam, iron it real quick on top, flip over the fabric, the corner, and iron it real good. And again, I highly recommend Best Press. It's really going to help in the piecing process, especially with these small pieces. So, that's one part, half of our flying geese. And you're going to want to, because these pieces are so small, you're going to want to cut the bulk off. So just cut it about a quarter of an inch from the, from the side. So you'll have a quarter of an inch um, seam. Now I'm going to put another one of the darker purple on the other opposite side. There you go. I'm going to do a line from this corner to this corner and again stitch just one thread length on this side of the line. And all that's going to do is it's going to make sure that your corner actually your fabric folds up um, all the way to the top of your rectangle. It's just going to give you a nice crisp corner. Set the seam by ironing it real quick on top and then folding it over. And we're going to best press. There is our tiny flying geese. Now, how crazy is that? It's so tiny. And that cut the bulk. And there you go. That's one. Now you're going to do this opposite with the opposite color. So we're going to start with the darker purple rectangle and have two of the lavender purples. And basically, if you can see, hopefully you're looking at your pattern, that's this piece right here up top and this piece down here on the bottom. I'm going to just repeat the same process. I still can't, I can see the video, but I can't see any comments. So hopefully nobody's asking questions. <laughs> if you do have questions and I don't see it, 
just leave them, post them for me. Um, I'll answer them right after the video. Eventually, I think I'll get this the hang of this whole thing. So there we go. That's one part. Set the seam. It's going to be a lot of repeat here. And just iron it over. So there you go. We're going to cut the... Oh, I forgot to press press. I really do recommend it. When you're dealing with tiny, tiny pieces, um, it really helps them from stretching and going a little wonky. And yes, wonky is a technical term. Right after this video, I'm going to post it to YouTube for everybody who doesn't have Facebook. Now, one more piece on the other side. Again, I'm going to draw a line from this corner to this corner and sew just a thread width on this side. We were very lucky yesterday. Um, we didn't get any rain in Orlando at all. And as we were coming home, I could see that it rained just about everywhere from Orlando back to Titusville. But we didn't get any while we were at Epcot. Hopefully the rain here didn't ruin anybody's plans for Mother's Day. So we set the seam and then we're just going to iron it up. And best press. And there we go. There's the second one. Actually it's going to look like, well, on the bottom it'll be like this and on the top it'll be like that. So I'm just going to cut the bulk out. So. Okay, next part. Next, we're going to make some half square triangles with the purples on the bigger squares. So I'm sure you've done this plenty of times. This is going to be another opportunity for you to chain piece. And chain piecing saves some time. Um, basically, you're not going to cut your threads. You're just going to turn and go on the opposite side. And for those that don't know or did not see the first video, um, half square triangles are real simple. You're going to use a bigger square than you actually need and draw a line diagonally from corner to corner. And then we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on the opposite side. When you cut on that line that you made, you have two half square triangles. And the reason that we use a bigger square is because by the time you sew the quarter of an inch and quarter of an inch, you've lost a half inch almost. So, or just about a half inch. So if we want them to be, you know, a certain size, you always have to go up. I don't know if anybody's on today. Okay, I'm going to keep on going. So, those of you who might have the quarter inch 
um, foot with the guide. Basically, you want to put the guide right on your line that you just drew and stitch a quarter of an inch from that line. It's really simple. And then what we're going to do is just feed the second piece in. And then rather than cut, we're just going to pull them out. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it, but basically I'm going to pull some extra threads so you can see. See how I've just done one side and I've, by feeding the second piece in, I have this little connecting thread. All I did was pull it out instead of cutting and now I'm going to turn it and sew the opposite side. I promise I really will get the hang of all of this. It might be on one of the last videos, but I will get the hang of it. What chain piecing does is it saves a little bit of time and it's actually um, very fast, especially if you have a lot of piecing um, in the same uh, idea as far as either half square triangles or putting bl just blocks together. Um, it does go very fast when you can just keep on feeding them through. Okay, there's our four now half square triangles. And all we're gonna do is cut right on the line that we originally drew. Oh, somebody's on. I can't see comments, but somebody's definitely watching. Woohoo, I'm not by myself. Um, what I recommend is when you iron it, iron it with the darker purple on top. What that's going to do is it's going to put the seam on the dark side rather than against the lavender where it possibly could be seen. So we just set our seam and iron our half square triangle up, flip and iron. And again, I can't say it enough. I do recommend Best Press. It's just enough starch to stop these little pieces that you're dealing with from going all kinds of wonky. It really will help you stitching these small pieces too because the starch will help keep everything nice and straight and give you a little bit stiffness not a ton but enough um as i said in the first video normally for the most part i do not cut my dog ears off um normally i would use those in the piecing process but these pieces are very very tiny um and i don't want the bulk in this in these pieces so i am cutting it off for now And how do you like the new setup as far as instead of seeing the last video was on the side now we're kind of straight on let me know what you think okay so now even I have to go back to my drawing once in a while just to make sure I'm in the right spot. I 
I lay things down a lot um, when I'm piecing. Just, you know, even if I do a couple, uh, uh, sew two pieces together, I will lay them back down just to make sure that I am piecing things together because you, you know as well as I do, it's very, very easy to piece them together wrong backwards or um, just in the wrong spot. So these are the two flying geeses that we did first and these are the half square triangles. These are two rectangles that we've got to sew together and our corner pieces. I recommend sewing these two together and then sewing them uh, these two and these two together and then sewing them together as three different rows. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to sew my two rectangles together. And you can chain piece easily. Just remember what you're doing. So again, the dark on top when I'm ironing. That'll put the seam on the dark side and not uh, behind the lighter fabric, which will stop it from looking like a shadow. Unfortunately, when this pattern, it's not always um, possible to do that, but I tried to do that as much as possible. Now, with the half square triangles, the seam that we used on the diagonal, that we created on the diagonal, is a perfect place to actually set your seam. The two seams are opposite each other and they will butt together nice and flat. And these pieces are so small, you really don't need a scissor, I mean a, a pin. I'm just going to chain piece these in. And then cut them apart. There's our two half square triangles. Um, now making sure that they go back the way they're supposed to again. So this is the first row. This is the middle row where we sewed our small pieces together. And then we've got the final row. And that's how I'm going to put them together. Once I have the rows together, then I'll sew the rows together to make our full block. None of this project is really super hard. Um, there is a little bit of learning curve when you get to a couple of parts, but um, I'll be here to help you through the whole process.
I hope you're enjoying this. I really do. This is a great pattern to actually, um, to shop in your stash. Get rid of some of your, you know, smaller fabrics. Now, this is a great chance. As you can see, we iron this seam towards the dark side. And this seam is going the same way. But there's nothing in this half square triangle portion um, or no reason that we can't iron the seam going the opposite way so we can um, sandwich and nest these two pieces together to get the seams perfect. So I just re-ironed it and I'm you know it's it's gonna happen you want it to go together as easy as possible and hindsight is 2020 sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't okay I'm sorry if I'm a little slow today. I'm very tired. And I would go slow with this. Make sure your seams stay as flat as possible when you come to it. You know, if you have to lift your foot and put it back down to make sure the seam goes under well and flat, please do. Um, the flatter your seams and the more neat your seams on this project, the easier it will go together for you. This side has to go this way. And this seam, if you turn, if I turn them around, they're both the same, going the same way. So again, we're gonna change this one down. There you go. And now they will nest together very nicely. this is not hard at all it goes together pretty fast it's just a simple uh, kind of like a nine patch but it's actually six blocks and the sides that's it that's all we have once we have done with this part So, anybody want to share what they did for Mother's Day? I shared. I told you what I did. And let me tell you, I'm tired for it, too. Walking around in heat is not fun. But the flower show itself was actually very pretty. They even had a butterfly um, garden. And that was fun, walking around all the butterflies. Excuse me. 
All right, we're down to our final row or before we sew all three rows together. thread came undone. My needle came unthreaded. It's one of the quirks about Brothers machines that I found that if you don't pull your thread out after you cut it far enough, it unthreads as you're sewing the first few stitches. And sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. Now remember, have fun with this. It's not meant to be perfect. And nobody is perfect. And you should just enjoy putting it together. Okay, so now we've got our rows complete. So we're gonna sew our rows together. Now I have a tendency of just for this, because this centerpiece is so big, I will sew these together. And before ironing it, I will sew this one on. There's plenty of room that it's not gonna get connected. Now, hmm, I am, because of the way the seams are going, going to iron this seam back towards this way so that the other seam will nest nicely. Like I told you, I tried very hard to figure this all out um, as much as possible. And yes, is it a lot of ironing, but in the long run, you'll be much happier because it will lay much flatter and nicer for you. And it'll piece together um, a lot easier. And your seams will match. nest the seams and get them to align perfectly. This is one point where I will put a couple of pins just so that my seams don't go anywhere. Um, I know where they're supposed to be. If um, you have a little bit of excess fabric in the center, when you pin both of your seams together, and you get a little bit of excess. Once you get over this first um, set of seams, just tug a little bit to get rid of the bulk. Cotton and fabric in general usually has a little bit of give. I promise it's not a big deal and it will go together quite nicely.
Is it perfect? No, but I'm okay with that. I really am. Now the final piece. going to undo that seam only because I don't like where it's laying. Sometimes when you're doing points and flying geese, um, with your uh, point meets, you really want your thread, maybe to, your seam, your, to connect them, to be a scant quarter of an inch and not go above where they intersect. By going above where they intersect, you cut your point off. See? So basically, I am just going to undo that little bit of stitching there and re-sew and make sure I come down here. Yes, it's not going to be perfect, but not very many things in life are perfect. And from the eye, when people look at it, it will look much better with that scant quarter of an inch seam rather than the perfect quarter of an inch seam all the way across. better. I just got to get rid of my extra few stitches here. Oh, time for the seam ripper. Yes, I know we all don't like it, but sometimes it's a necessary evil. Now, once I take out those little bit of threads that I unstitched, see how nicely the point now is shown? And I'm going to do that on the other side too because I don't like not seeing the points. The whole idea with the flying geese is to see the points. And when you don't, you're just kind of cutting it off. It doesn't look the same. Um, it's not a big deal, but everybody learns. And that's why I'm kind of glad that I did this, because it gives you the opportunity to learn from my mistakes and how I do it. There's going to be quite a few places in this quilt where we're going to do just a scant quarter of an inch. And is it all going to match up? No, but that's okay. I found that by doing the scant quarter of an inch seam, your star and your points will look much better. And 
that's okay. We can trim up the excess a little bit later and it's all right. It's not a big deal. It's more important that you learn something new and have fun with it. All right, let's try that one more time. Oh, much better. So if I get rid of the threads. Now, you can actually see my points. Now we're going to iron that one way to set the seams. And then the other way to open it. Yes, I teach, but I'm not perfect as far as sewing. Sometimes I get ahead of myself just a tiny bit, but that's okay. As much as I don't like the seam ripper, it's sometimes necessary. I'm just pulling the threads out so you have a nice, clean view of what it's going to look like. Now, this is a little wonky. Not wonky, but it's just a little bit bigger on the top and the bottoms. And that's what happens sometimes with all of these seams. Since you have so many seams, it happens. And these are a lot of little seams. So believe it or not, I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. That's it. Isn't that cute? All right, now we're going to take two of the navy blue and sew them. Actually, we're going to sew like this to the lavender for both sides. So we're going to do that first. With the dark blue on top, that's how I want you to iron them. <sighs> Actually, one of them is going to be ironed that way. The other one is going to be ironed the other way. That way your seams should nest nicely. Actually, I was wrong. They should both go that way. They should both go towards the lavender. Sorry. All right. 
And this is another point where I will use a pin just to make sure my seams nest nicely and I don't miss it. Because I really try not to use my seam ripper as much as possible. Now, that's probably the hardest part of this entire um, block this this uh, week. Not that it's super hard, it's just a lot of little piecing. It really isn't difficult if you just take it one step at a time and keep putting your pieces back down once you sew them. That way you don't lose track of where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I'm just going to trim this up just a tiny bit. All right, folks, there we go. That's one part. Now we're going to do the bottom part. this you should get with no problems because this part is fairly easy so now we're going to just sew these uh, blocks together all I did was or not all I'm going to do is sew these two together these two together these two together and I'm going to use the dark purple as um, where all the seams are going to go. So once you sew these two together, make sure when you go to iron it that the dark purple's on top. What that will do is this, this seam will go this way, this one will go this way, and this one will go this way. And it'll make putting these columns together much easier and your seams will nest. And I am going to chain piece this. If you haven't um, started cutting your fabrics, or you haven't started this, I highly recommend cutting everything at once and bagging it up with the appropriate A, B, C, D, as far as parts. This way, you know what you're doing in advance, and it takes a lot of the process out of it. See, everything has been already cut and bagged, and I have a little sticky on it. That way I can just take the bags out. I know I have enough fabric for everything, and if you have to substitute anything, um, it's a lot easier to do it when you've got all the fabric laid out and you're trying to figure out what fabrics you're gonna use than it is as you're going along. Um, because some of the parts do interchange and you definitely want the same fabric here as here. So again, I recommend cutting all of the fabric in advance and just keeping yourself organized by putting it in individual bags with the 
part numbers, part A, B, C, D. It'll really make your life a lot easier and the rest of this process will go very easy for you. Okay, we're gonna set the seams and iron them up. I'd love to see you post your parts to this as we go. So as you finish them, post them to the video. That way we can all see what fabrics everybody's picked, if people pick different fabrics, different colors. Okay. Now, so these are the, we've gotten sewed together the individual blocks, and now we're just gonna piece them together. The seams will be going opposite so it'll be very easy to nest them. And these pieces of fabric are fairly big so I will not pin them. Um, it's pretty easy once you get your seams together to feel that they're flat and to put them through. Oh. I lost my the red again. Now, the center piece is the one that we want on top. What I mean by that is this center column. We want that on top when we iron it so the seam will go this way. So you set your seam and flip and turn. Now, if I do this one, again, they'll nest very easily. And you can feel it. When it's nice and flat, it is together really well, and the seams will line up. If it's a little bulky in that seam, that means your seams aren't lined up, and you need to adjust them. Almost done. Okay, so all we're gonna do is iron it. And I put the small piece on top rather than the four patch so that my seam is gonna go opposite of the first seam. There we go. And now all we have to do is iron this one together. Actually, I did that wrong. See, I told you I'm not perfect. But I think for this last one we want the, that we just did, we want the seam going in. And I know it's kind of silly and it's a lot of ironing, but it really will help you in the long run if you do this. All right. 
Now I'm just gonna put them together. Um, and the seams should line up very well. I won't put a pin, any pins here because um, I don't think it needs it. I do recommend a scant quarter inch when you're putting these two halves together and pay attention to where your um, flying geese ends meet so you don't cut any of your points off. I also recommend iron it towards the little towards the squares so I'm gonna iron my seam up um, only because there's so much going on down here I don't want to add it add any more bulk to it There we go. That's this week's block. Is it perfect? No. Is it going to be a little wonky? Yes, that's the nature of some small, when you're working with small pieces. But as you can see in the long run, it really does look great. And you're not going to notice anything. As long as you keep an eye on your points down here for your flying geese and you don't cut any off, it's going to look beautiful. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. Um, next week, we are going to work on part C, which is this one, which is going to be fairly easy. It's just a pinwheel and a four patch um, before we get into this whole part right here. This, I'll be honest with you, is probably one of the more difficult, not impossible, not super hard, but matching these parts up, these seams here are probably the hardest part. And I'll be honest, I actually unstitched and stitched a couple of times, but hopefully you learn from my mistake and it's not too hard. So I hope everybody had a lovely Mother's Day yesterday. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please post, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. Um, let me know that you enjoyed it and if you are sewing along with me post your um, parts so far just so that we can see and everybody can see what colors you're using um, I always enjoy seeing everybody's work and sometimes the colors that you use I would have never even thought of and they're gonna look beautiful so everybody that's it until next Monday 10 a.m. and we'll do video 3 part C have a great day, everybody.